All right. Welcome to, today, to today's Training Tuesday, everyone. I am Heidi Reese and work here at Dayton Superior in the Marketing Department. And we have a special treat for you today with two presenters that have extensive knowledge in TopCast systems. But before we get started, like always, I want to let you know that you are all muted uh, so as not to disturb with background noises so that others can hear the presentation. Uh, but please feel free to ask any questions through the chat functionality through Zoom. And at the end, we will have a mini question and answer session, and I will uh, say those questions and our presenters will answer them for you. So in today's webinar, uh, we will be talking about the full TopCast system. And it's gonna go over first the TopCast surface retarders. And then it's going to go into the full decorative finish system for TopCast to discuss preparing your surface, the types of application methods, dust proofing and sealing, types of sealers and their attributes, extending that working time of yours if you need it, saving your workspace, and the benefit of using the full system. So as you see on the screen, I do want to point out that this presentation is intended for training purposes only. Do you require any technical specifications, technical data sheets, safety data sheets for the products mentioned in this training, please refer, refer to www.daytonsuperior.com. All right, so our two presenters today, the first one who will be talking about the TopCast surface retarders is Bill McHugh, and he is North America TopCast sale manager for GCP Technologies, who is the supplier of TopCast to us. Uh, GCP is a construction products technology company that is dedicated to developing high performance products as well as continued pursuit of advancement in construction technologies, but trying to simplify the complexities of the construction worldwide. And so Bill is going to be presenting this piece. He brings us exemplary knowledge for the top cast subject. He has over 30 years of experience in the concrete and concrete chemical industries and has worked over 10 years with the landscape architects, the contractors, and the building supply houses in all aspects of TopCast. So he's based out of Atlanta, go Braves, and works for our supplier of TopCast, GCP Technologies, as I said, for uh, all of North America. So he's traveling around promoting and assisting on job sites. In addition, for the second half, we've got Caleb Stroud. Caleb is Dayton Superior's technical sales representative and he's going to enlighten us on his experience in development and the support of chemical powders, liquids, and epoxies. So this really makes him a good one for um, assisting in the knowledge. He is also the feet behind the video in our top cast uh, full line demonstration video. So that's exciting. You're finally going to hear his voice if you've watched our uh, demo video. Um, he is one of Dayton Superior's technical service representatives that can assist in chemical product specification needs, as well as any other technical questions that you may have. This Missouri Western State University grad has been in the industry for over six years, beginning his career in technical services and then moving on to technical sales role that he's in. All right, so let's get started. Bill, tell us a little bit more about the top cast. Thank you, Heidi. We will jump right in and um... TopCast is a system of products that will allow contractors and designers to, hello? Heidi, are you getting that background? Right here, Bill. Oh. oh. Sorry about okay. that, technical glitch. Go All ahead. Right. We'll, we'll <laughs> with that with that introduction, but TopCast is a uh, liquid surface retarder that allows for contractors, designers, owners to achieve a, a very light finish on their concrete. Um, essentially, TopCast is a liquid chemical agent that reacts with the cement paste uh, to delay, to retard the hardening of the concrete. If you look at the pictures in the bottom of the slideshow, we'll give you a little explanation of how they do their magic. Uh, 
the the screen on the bottom left uh, represents a cross section of a slab. And if you see the greenish gray areas, that represents the cement or even the pigment in the concrete. Uh, the different shapes, the different geometries represent the aggregates, both the coarse and the fine aggregate. The contractor places the concrete, he then finishes it. And if you look in the middle picture, uh, he, he screeds it, he floats it. Uh, then he does some uh, finishing uh, with hand trowels and he achieves a very flat and smooth surface that uh, provides for a consistent finish. That's the cement paste uh, in that surface. And then when there's still a moisture sheen and the slab is thumbprint hard, the top cast is sprayed onto the surface. The cement particles absorb the top cast. The top cast does its magic thereby retarding uh, the cement. It prevents it from hydrating. And then depending on ambient conditions, later that day or the next morning, the contractor will come back and with a combination of water and brushes, he removes those retarded cement particles and some of the fines. Basically they're inert, so you get a residue and they're rinsed off depending on which level of etch was used, will depend on the, the depth of the etch. Next. So from an applicator standpoint, timing matters, ambient conditions matter. The colder the weather, the warmer the weather, those need to be taken into consideration. But after final finishing, then there is no bleed water present. You've got a moisture sheen and the thumbprint hard. If you look in the top picture, the contractor will then use a commercial grade sprayer. We do not want any garden sprayers from Home Depot and Lowe's. You, you need a, a more uh, robust, uh, like a Chapin sprayer. Uh, if you look in the picture of the bottom right, I'm sure you're familiar with these kind of sprayers, but the contractor then, as you see in the middle picture, uh, once everything is timing is right, uh, they spray the top cast onto the slab. The removal process, can you go back? The removal process is also contingent upon ambient conditions. The hotter the weather, the sooner you'll need to remove. The cooler the weather, the more time you have to remove. Just an example would be once you get to 85 to 90 degrees, you're probably gonna have to remove the same day, 70 degrees and less, typically overnight. Caleb will speak to a new product that we have that can extend the removal period. But typical removals are either a slow speed buffer. If you look at the slide in the middle, uh, the gentleman who has the slow speed buffer on the right, and you see a garden hose, another gentleman on the left, this has become the preferred method for three reasons. Number one, a much more consistent finish, number two, productivity, and number three, where rinse water is a concern, you'll use much less rinse water. The, the, the more traditional method is on the left, and it's a pressure washer. Essentially, the pressure washer is used not to leave wand marks or etch the concrete, but to rinse off those inert particles and in combination with a brush. Next. So here's a matrix that kind of gives a good overview of different components of the top cast. As I mentioned, I think top cast comes in five gallon pails. Each pail is 
coded, it's a number code. It's if you look in that one column, no code, that stands for number code 01, 03, 05, and all the way to 250. The lower the number, the lighter the etch. The higher the number, the deeper the etch. The next column shows the estimated etch depth. And as you can see, we start with a very light acid wash to sandblast finish all the way down to one inch. And then the final column, the package color, it can be confusing, especially to designers. Top cast, each pail, each etch level is tinted to identify it. The different colors allow the contractors two things. Number one, to ensure consistent application rates. The contractor knows he's getting the proper coverage by the spray application. And number two, if for some reason the label on the pail becomes illegible, the contractor can look at the pail, they're opaque, and they can say, oh, that's light blue, that's an 05. Oh, that's beige, that's a 25. So those are the two reasons. Topcast does not impart any color to the concrete. When the top cast is rinsed off, the tint is also rinsed off with it. The products are environmentally friendly. Uh, we meet the most stringent VOC requirements in the country in Southern California. And if you're involved with a living building challenge project, such as Google or Amazon, we can work with you to get the paperwork done on that. Typical applications for TopCast are wherever, you know, hardscapes or, you know, any type of pedestrian pavements are specified. What we're seeing now is TopCast is becoming the preferred finish in lieu of broom finished concrete. Wherever broom finished concrete has been used in the past, TopCast is being looked as a, a fantastic alternative. It, out, it allows for aesthetics, it provides for a non-slip surface, and the value it is, it is very cost competitive, which I will get into. It's used on commercial applications, plaza decks, um, sidewalks. Uh, it can be used in low-speed vehicular areas, residential, you know, pool decks, patios, driveways. And for the last four years, the municipal and public sectors have really flipped the market for us. Historically, TopCast was used on decorative concrete, but now probably 60 to 70% of all TopCast applications are in what I call functional concrete, just gray concrete. So it's not, it's, it's really opened up a lot of municipalities prefer this over a broom finish. Next. From a specifier's end, the specifier needs to consider, you know, what level of appearance he wants. Does he want a micro etch, a medium etch, or a deeper etch? Does he want the concrete color? Those are two critical components the contractor must know about. Also, does the designer get involved with the different types of aggregates, whether he can want, maybe he wants to seed the project. Maybe they get involved with the, the selection of that, but mixed designs matter and we have the ability to coach and guide designers and contractors on mixed designs. And that one picture with the six different tiles, I think it illustrates you know, why mixed designs matter. If you look at the far left, that's a very smooth, light finish. And if you had the aggregates that are in the sample on the far right, it would be very difficult to achieve that finish. And the converse is true also. We like to see designers specify mock-up panels. We like to see them four by four. The mixed design for the panels shall be the mixed design for the project. And I include this one picture as a reminder of the way really not to do mock-ups at the job site. And what I mean by that, it's best to do them separate, not connected. And the reason why is you want to keep that mock-up for the duration of the job. And if the, you pour four mock-ups and only one, maybe two are kept, 
You can put them, and they're separated, you can put them on a pallet and you can keep them available for future reference on the jobs. It can, it can really uh, reduce a lot of finger pointing. Next. And I, I'm always asked, you know, what is, what is the price point for TopCast? And, you know, the price point is going to vary across the country due to the cost of ready mix, the cost of labor, the cost of aggregates, transportation. But what I can tell you, and this is very consistent, I've traveled across the US and parts of Canada, and I always show this to contractors, this what I would call price continuum, from the lowest price point for you know, a, a finished pavement, that would be broom concrete in the lower right. The next price point would be top cast, and you know, exposed aggregate finish without any pigments. The next price point would then be concrete pavers and then decorative concrete, which can be top cast with multiple colors or single colors or even stamp concrete, then brick pavers and then natural stone. But I think that's a good way if you're involved with clients or customers, you know, top cast is the next price point up from broom finished concrete. Next. I'll turn right. it over to Thanks Caleb. Thanks so much, Bill. Yeah, so Caleb is up next. He's going to talk to us about the rest of the decorative finish system that's going to protect and seal products. You see their spray, rinse, protect show. I uh, just want to put a plug in for the how-to video that I referenced. There's Caleb's shoes in the right middle image above the YouTube. Uh, how-to videos, we have it on the full line. We have it on Just Topcast SS100 Site Saver as well as a surface retarder and EX200 extender, and the TopCast PR300, CS400, and HG500, and all of those are finishing. So Caleb's gonna talk about this line that provides that complete line designed to make the TopCast application easier, but gives you the level of protection that you need with which kind of finish you need. So Caleb, go ahead. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, so as Heidi said, we, we have a decorative system designed to, in conjunction with TopCast, um, to kind of, you know, I guess, uh, create from beginning to end, uh, you know, protection and ease around it. Uh, to dive it right into it, we have the uh, SS100, or we also call the Site Saver. And what this product does is if you have existing structures around it, you can see in the lower right, um, is there an echo coming in? Someone's picking up. Anyways. Not an R end. You're okay, Caleb. Okay, perfect. Um, so, anyways, as you can see in the photo on the lower right, you have uh, the plastic that's taped up to protect the structure. This site saver is an alternative to that. Uh, so, what you want to do is you spray the existing structure the day before around it, um, place your concrete, and then place your top cast. And then when you come back and do the wash off, you can spray off any uh, potential leftover residue that can get stuck to it. Um, but a key point is, is this product, you typically do not want to spray on glass. Um, it can potentially etch it. Uh, so just make sure to stay away from that. Next. So we have the EX200, which is the extender. And, and to me, out of all, the, all these products, I would say this would be the game changer. Um, okay. Caleb, yes. let me interject. I, I apologize, but it does seem like we have a echo. Uh, others are hearing it as well. Do you happen to be? I'm not you. I'm not sure where it's coming from. I'm in a hotel room and haven't uh, done anything. Let me turn the volume down on it and see. What about now? Okay, well, let's keep going. Uh, and the recording should be better, so we can uh, put that out there for everyone to hear. They're having trouble hearing right now. So tell me about the EX200 wash off extender that is our focus product. Okay, sorry, yeah. Uh, so the EX200 wash off extender, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, a product that you typically apply if you want to extend removal time. Uh, so the removal time, 
is probably one of the biggest problems that we run into is a lot of times they'll spray the top gas down, they'll leave it on too long and it'll stick to the surface. Uh, so what you really wanna do is, you know, if you want more working time, uh, so that way it doesn't get away from you and you don't have any problems, you would use the extender. So you apply your top cast, uh, you let the top cast dry, and then you apply the EX200 over the top of the top cast. Um, and then you can come back anywhere from 24 to 48 hours later and wash it off and not have any issues removing it from the surface. Um, you know, but, sorry, go back real quick, I apologize. <clears throat> Um, so, you know, one thing that Bill and I do when we work with uh, specifiers, um, everyone, you know, we typically recommend they use this just because it takes a lot of liability out of your project by using the extender. Um, so, you know, it's one thing to think about if you ever have a contractor um, or specifier, depending on who's on the call. Um, I would always recommend, you know, trying to push the EX200. Um, it does save a lot of time on labor. You know, uh, a lot of times we'll have guys that are spraying on a Friday and they'll come back on a Monday and wash off and it kind of saves you time from babysitting and having to pay someone to watch the concrete for too long. So, okay, go ahead to the next one. And then we have our sealers. Um, these are all kind of an either or product. Uh, we have the three main different categories, uh, the PR300, which is your penetrating protector. It uh, is non-film forming. You basically spray it down and you spray it down and typically let it soak into the concrete. And the next day when you come back, it will beat up water and protect it. Um, it reacts with the free lime and the concrete mix to give it water repellencies. Um, while also not compromising the texture that you're wanting on your concrete that the top cast is going to achieve. And then you have your uh, top cast CS400 cure and seal. Um, if, if there is a specification to where it requires a curing and sealing component, um, then that's the one you would want to use. It has some, I believe it has around 18 or 19 percent solids in it. Um, so it won't necessarily meet the 1315, but it does have some acrylic uh, sealer components to it while also meeting ASTM C309. And then we have our Topcast HG500, the high gloss option. It is just a topical sealer. It is a water-based sealer. So it is VOC compliant in almost all regions. Um, and if it's just, if you want some extra shine and pop to it, this is a good alternative option. So we have all three kind of ceiling categories uh, as options. Uh, my, my personal preference is, you know, most of the time we see, because with Topcast, you know, texture is a key thing. That's what you're really trying to achieve by using it. So I usually recommend the PR300 um, just because it will not affect the texture at all. The Cure and Seal on the high gloss doesn't really affect the texture if it's applied properly, but if you do over apply, Sometimes it can like basically fill in those crevices and create a smooth surface. So you just gotta be very careful depending on your edge level, um, how you apply those things. But it's done many, 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 many times in the field where they use those products and there's no issues. It just depends on what, how you're wanting to complement the look. Go ahead to the next. And this just kind of highlights some of the key points uh, about the products, you know, the PR300, um, you know, to be honest, it says five plus years, but realistically, it's going to be there the length of the concrete. It reacts with the concrete and never really goes away. So you'll never need to come back and use any maintenance coats or anything like that on the PR300. Um, on the top cast uh, 400, the Cure and Seal, it's a semi gloss. Like I said, it's got around 18, 19% solids. Um, it provides some good stain protection. It is membrane forming, but as most people know who deal with any kind of acrylic sealers, uh, you do have to do maintenance. Uh, so typically anywhere from one to two years, depending on uh, the environmental factors and how much traffic it gets. Um, and one to two years, you're gonna have to come back and do maintenance coats. Um, and like I said, it does meet the ASTM C309. And then our high gloss sealer, uh, just, you know, it is film forming. It's a little bit more heavier duty, more solid content to it. Um, and it is a water-based product, and you also still have to do maintenance coats over time with that as well.
All righty, on to the next. And this just kind of shows uh, what it looks like when you don't treat. So on the far left with the micro HDL one, we treated it with the PR 300. So when you look at it and you touch it, it doesn't, it just looks like concrete, like nothing's there, um, no shine to it. But as you can see, when you put water on it, it beads right up and repels it and gives it, you know, protection. Uh, the 05, we did nothing with. And as you can see, water just absorbed right into it. Um, on the middle one, you know, a little bit deeper edge, we did the CS400. And, you know, I know this angle doesn't quite show it, but if you were to kind of angle it and put it into a little light, you'd see a little bit of a shiny pop to it that highlights the aggregates a little bit more. Um, but as you can also see, it does protect it against water as well. Same thing on the 75 with no protection to it, um, you know, just soaks right in. And then on the far right, you can see the HG500 where it really, you know, makes the aggregates pop and, and shine a bit more. Um, and then I know it's kind of hard to tell because of the shine and everything, but there is water in the middle of it that's beating right up. Yep. And on to the next. Um, and then Heidi, I think you can take it from here, right? Oh, I suppose so, Caleb. All okay. right, so just want to let you know again. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla, by the way. Uh, the DaytonSuperior.com has all the technical data sheets, safety data sheets. If you need any contact information, <clears throat> excuse me, information for your sales representative or customer service, as well as technical, which would be Caleb in certain uh, regions, that will allow you uh, to find that information as well on the top right uh, under contact information. You can also go to the GCP Applied Technologies, and they have a great website with the information on TopCast. Uh, you can visit our YouTube channel on Dayton Superior, as well as on the Dayton Superior website. All of those videos that I referenced early on are there. Uh, the image on the bottom right is our TopCast decorative finish system landing page. That will point you and tell you a little bit more about what Caleb and Bill have referenced to us. And uh, you can watch the video from there. You can see all the different various products and uh, order them online if you chose choose. So with that, before I go into this slide, um, please ask any of the questions that you may have on the chat functionality, and I will get those answered for you. Um, I do want to say with this slide that um, some great deals are going on right now. We have the TopCast Surface Retarder Summer Sales Event. It's our special pricing that we have a couple times a year. It is happening right now until the end of June, so take advantage of that. But in addition, what's really exciting is to put all of these other products to make the complete deal uh, for you, for Superior Deal, um, that is also going on for June. So both are co coinciding with each other. Contact your sales representative for details and pricing and to order to discuss what you need, how much you need, and you can go from there. So are there any questions? Just another little blurb, we have an awesome training gentleman, Chuck Hoke, he is our national training person. If you would like to contact him, his information is on the screen right now, and you can send an email to that training at DaytonSuperior.com and talk things over with Chuck to see if we have uh, some presentations available for you um, and your company and to sign up for that. Okay, one more shout out for questions. I'm so glad, Meredith, that you were able to hear finally. Uh, I was worried that we had that echo. So I, I'm glad that you can hear now. For those of you who may not know, we record these videos so you can hear them online if you did have problems with that. I want to extend a big thank you for joining us today. And remember that every Tuesday we have them on different subject matters. We're actually going from chemicals to the forming world next week. Um, and that will be pretty exciting. Probably maybe not you guys <laughs> if you're here for TopCast, but spread the word if you know anybody who wants to know about steel ply. Um, we have these all online. In addition, we have other chemical trainings that we've done. We have accessory trainings, and those can be found on YouTube or DaytonSuperior.com to search for training. So go ahead and uh, sign up for next week's if you want to, and you're welcome. Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any questions, so I'll let you all go, and I appreciate you attending again. Thank you, and have a happy Tuesday. Thank you.